be active in that area, but do not lop off a quarter of what is an important industry for this country. Said Madam Speaker. Strong finish. Strong finish. Uh, the Honourable Eugenie Sage. E tamangai o te whare tēnā koe, tūrarua ki nā mema o tō tātou whare, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Congratulations, Madam Deputy Speaker. I look forward to your and Speaker Mallard's rigorous and astute guidance of this House. And can I also endorse the comments by my colleague, the Honourable Tracy Martin. The National Opposition has an opportunity to ensure that select committees deliver much better legislation. As a Minister, I want to see legislation that comes back to the House from select committees as having been thoroughly considered taking on board the comments and submissions of submitters and improved. There's an opportunity now for us to strengthen our democracy by having select committees work in the way that they are intended, rather than in the past term when ministers used them as a rubber stamp and it was ministers that controlled the legislation rather than select committees. So please use that opportunity and be constructive. Madam Speaker, it's a very great honour to have been elected back into this parliament by New Zealanders. And it's a very great privilege to serve under our Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, whom I have no doubt will be absolutely outstanding as Prime Minister. It's a privilege too to speak as the first Green Minister for Conservation, Land Information and an Associate Minister for the Environment. I'm proud to assure New Zealanders that under this government, we will have a Minister of Conservation and Associate Minister for the Environment who believes in nature and safeguarding the values of our species here in Aotearoa. We believe in the right of New Zealanders to have access to clean rivers, healthy beaches, wild landscapes where our indigenous plants and wildlife thrive where there's adequate funds invested in predator control to get them out of serious trouble that they are currently in. We believe that we have got a responsibility to safeguard these species which came to these islands so many millions of years ago, which are the first inhabitants of Aotearoa, so that generations unborn can enjoy them and so that they can thrive for their own sake. We haven't seen that under the past national government because they believed in nature for exploitation, not in sustaining it for its own sake, not in recognising its importance as natural capital, as a natural asset which provides us with clean water, with the air that we breathe, with the places that we recreate, and which provides the infrastructure for critical industries like tourism and like our primary sector. Mr. Spe Mr Speaker, nature is at the heart of our success as a country. It's these wild and distinctive landscapes which are so important to Māori and which are at the core of our identity as New Zealanders. Nature is at the backbone of our economy. It's critical to the success of our provinces. It's where tourists go. It's essential for jobs in the provinces and it provides economic opportunities there. So we have got a duty to safeguard nature to ensure that our environment is healthy because a healthy environment is the basis of a healthy economy, not the other way around, which is what we've seen over the last nine years. It's our job to safeguard it, not to strip mine it, not to commercialise it as National has sought to do um, in its previous term. Because that's been what has happened under National. We've had our rivers, our aquifers exploited for intensive agriculture, um, dryland ecosystems in the Mackenzie Basin and Canterbury and elsewhere converted to farm pasture, biodiversity values destroyed, and for what? A few dollars. We cannot have a strong economy long term if we destroy the natural capital that that economy depends upon. It was under National that we saw conservation law changed under urgency to allow logging on conservation land, something that had never happened in the previous 30 years of the department's existence. That won't happen under this government. It was under National that we saw an ambitious plan for predator-free New Zealand, but no plan to implement it and no adequate funding either. 
That won't happen under this government. There are 4,000 species, indigenous species, many of them only found here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, which are threatened with or at risk of extinction. Yet under national, only 16 per cent of the conservation estate had sustained predator control. And only 338 of those 4,000 species were under active management by the Department of Conservation. There is wide agreement across the three parties in government that National has underfunded conservation, has failed to recognise the importance of nature to our economy. So that's why there is a strong commitment in both um, our confidence and supply agreement and the coalition agreement with New Zealand First that we will invest in conservation. We need to do that if we're to safeguard our security long term and the security of species like geckos, skinks, bats, our native birds like the kia, the kiwi, the kokako. DOC is responsible as kaitiaki for all of these species on our conservation lands and in the marine reserves, but they, those species don't know administrative boundaries. They live on private land as well. And under the former government, we had the department failing in its statutory responsibility to be an advocate for nature to ensure that decision makers like councils knew about the values of those species, their habitats, the impact that developments um, like conversion to dairying, like irrigation, could have on those. Under this government, we will restore DOC's ability to speak for nature and to ensure that the enormous technical knowledge and expertise of Department of Conservation staff is brought to bear in significant resource consent decisions and plans which are going to impact on our native species, on our plants and wildlife and wild landscapes. Because under National, Mr Speaker, we had funding for advocacy slashed to 600,000 annually. We had a reduction of 40 per cent in the number of planners who could speak for DOC in those RMA hearings. Under this government, we want an effective RMA. We want those matters of national importance which are set out in Section 6 to be taken account of by councils, to be brought to bear in decision making, not the exploitation we saw uh, under the former government. Mr Speaker, there is a lot to do under this government. We have a major challenge in getting rid of the despair and the gloom about how nature was treated under the former, under the last nine years. We are going to change that. We will be significantly increasing the funding for conservation so that we can um, improve the prospects for many of these 4,000 species which are teetering on the brink. We want to ensure that we plan better for tourism. We've had a major increase in visitors to New Zealand, but a failure to actually plan for their impacts on areas like the Mackenzie Basin, where we have small councils with a small rating base struggling to cope with thousands of extra visitors and without the infrastructure. We need to ensure that there are more jobs in the regions. We can do that if we develop more facilities for tourism in our provincial cities and towns, not commercialising our national parks, not commercialising our, our conservation lands by allowing big luxurious lodges and other commercial developments there. Mr Speaker, we will speak for nature because we recognise that it is at the heart of our economy and that we have got a lot to do um, to rectify the neglect the underfunding of the past nine years. It's a challenge I look forward to, and I want to reassure all New Zealanders that we recognise the importance of these lands for them, and we will be investing in our future and the future of these species which call this place home. We can do so much better, Mr Speaker, and we will. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Uh, members, I, I understand that um, Munakoa Porto Williams is present and wishes to make the affirmation of allegiance. Would she please come forward to the chair on my right? 